I had the strangest dream that I cared about the Anaheim Ducks recently. Really weird. I think I'm recovered, though. We're going to look at uh, the Kings because this is a show about the Kings that I host here on Locked On Los Angeles Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Tuesday, everyone. You're listening to Locked On Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. My name is Sarah Avampato, your host of this show, like I always am, because everything is completely normal on this podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day and or whenever you opened your podcast app. Uh, we missed uh, Mini Kings Monday, so we figured we would do uh, Tiny Kings Tuesday here. And so we've got Jay Foster from uh, Locked On uh, Ontario Rain, Locked On TJ Titan, I think we were calling it, uh, here on today's show. Um, first off, if you are confused by what, what's happening, if you missed Friday's show, well, April Fool's, no, J.D. Hernandez does not host this show. I do not host the Duck show. I promise that that, that was a funny, we did a funny uh, but everything is back to normal. Um, but I hope you enjoyed your like one day off from me. Um, if, if you listen to the Ducks show, you got to hear me talk about Trevor Zier because I did not talk about like Adam Henrique's beard once, which honestly was an oversight on my part. But we're going to look today at the Kings and the rain as we always do. And we're going to look first up at uh, their complete failure to do anything useful against the Calgary Flames. <laughs> you know, they had a chance. They had a chance to like pull very close to like the number one seed, which is insane. They had a chance to pull away from the Oilers, to pull away from Vegas, who's still trying to like claw their way up. And instead they like had something like three consecutive penalties in the third period and did absolute jack with all of them. Like go Kings. <laughs> I think they've reached that point in the season where they're like, oh crap. <laughs> when being perceived, run, run away, right. And the only no person who wants to be perceived is Adrian Kempe. Yeah, which makes yeah. sense. It's beautiful, but there are other beautiful people on the king that should. Right, uh, they should all do things. Do a thing. Yeah, ideally um, not a, a bad thing. Yeah. Um, we did Adrian Kempe. Uh, he he was kind of the only one who did useful things. He scored two goals. He is now a 31 goal scorer, which also sounds insane. Like if you would have said last season that Adrian Kempe was going to hit that many goals, I would have been like, you're crazy. Um, this is the most goals he's ever scored. He is now the first Kings player. This is from LA Kings PR. I don't actually know this, but they do. Um, first Kings player to hit the 30 goal mark since Kopitar in 2017-18. And the fourth different Kings player to hit the mark since 29-2010. Uh, Kopitar's done it twice. Jeff Carter and Tyler Toffoli. Um, and my, my reactions to this are two. One. <laughs> One. Weeping. One, like, awesome for Adrian Kempe. Congratulations. Good job. You've learned how to score goals. We realized you aren't a center, and now you can do things. So great. Two, that's really sad that we've had four goals, four 30 goal scorers in over, in, like, 12 years. Like. The Kings were bad for a while. So long. And so even when they were good, they were never goal scoring good. They were Jonathan Quick is going to win this game if right. he had to scalp all of the enemy. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like Daryl Sutter is like, you know, defense wins games, and then here we are. Um, yeah. In fairness, I think that um, we should put uh, Cal Peterson in the list of people that tried. Yes, um, he... because he, I thought, was good. Uh, unfortunately, everyone else on this team is terrible and should be sent to the moon. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, the, of the three goals against, I know one, I think, came off of an oops from Tobias Bjornfoot. One was that, like, ridiculous goal that was scored literally 10 seconds in, which was just a bad move by everybody. Um, 
so fine, whatever. Um, it just, it just was a dumb game. And so now, now we find ourselves in the position today of Kings fans have to root for the Sharks. Which, oh, well, we all know how that's gone. In yeah, it feels <laughs> literally bad. every game this season. The Sharks have disappointed me. Right, like because they they play Edmonton tonight. If Edmonton wins, they can leapfrog the Kings in the standings. So obviously, go Sharks, go! But I don't trust them at all. Mm-hmm. They're the Sharks. <laughs> hate them yeah the, i actually so i have vaguely positive feelings about the sharks for various reasons yeah. um, my partner is a, a north california native and a sharks fan uh unfortunately all they do is disappoint me specifically yeah so uh i am constantly in a fight with the with the san jose sharks yeah it's like when you need something from them when you need them to win or lose a game they do the opposite so i fully expect like you know, Leon Dreisaitl to score four goals or something. Um, and therefore the Oilers will win. Just. I don't know. I would enjoy another, what was it, like 7 4 yes. game where Leon Dreisaitl scores a hat trick and the Oilers still lose. Still lose. Like, yeah. It's very much San Jose wins, but Leon Dreisaitl catches the snitch. You know? <laughs> Exactly. That's like, what I want out of this right. season is for him to score a bajillion goals and for the Oilers to suffer. And still be sad. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But it's I feel like this is just that game against the Flames was like peak kings of we just need you to do one thing and then you could not do it. And here we are. I, I just just very fr- like and it was just I'm like, man, if this if this were to somehow be a playoff matchup, it's going to be now. I, now I know how like everyone else felt watching the Kings and being like, "Man, they're boring." Because <laughs> I'm like, "Now you're like, man, Calgary's right. boring." Right. I'm like, "Oh, great!" Like third Darryl period. Effect. Like, yeah, great job, Daryl Sutter. Third period shots were ten to five in favor of the Kings, which like that's not going to get the job done. They no, had. I will say that Tyler Toffoli has yet to have a revenge game, which yeah. is the small blessings. Yes. You know? He did. There was one very exciting moment in this, in that game where Tyler Toffoli went to hit, I think it was like Dursey or someone and just fully yeeted himself right into the boards. Like didn't even oh, hit buddy. the player that he was intending to hit. God, I love um, it was <laughs> very charming. I was like that. There, there's my Tyler Toffoli. There's cupcake. There's my boy. Well, we'll talk more about disappointments uh, coming up (laughs) next on the show. But before we get to that, let's talk all about betonline.net because it is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and information. Doesn't matter what sport it is you're into. Doesn't matter if you're looking for like odds or props or anything fancy you can find all of it on bet online you can get the latest sports developments including information on this week's masters championships uh you can get odds podcasts and reviews for all the different sports leagues this season so it's your continued sports continued source for all your sports wagering information including live betting esports and scores so you can head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online, it is where the game starts. And if I were a betting person, which I'm not, um, I would pretty much guarantee that no one would have bet for Adrian Kempe to have 30 plus goals this season. Like, feels like you could have made bank on that had you decided, I know what I'm going to spend my money on. Thinking and Adrian Kempe is going to score a lot of ten dollars on Adrian Kempe's because what what isn't his career high previous to this like sixteen something like that yeah like he has basically doubled his his yeah. previous goal career high which which like again congratulations to the Kings for figuring out that he's not a center yeah um congratulations to Adrian Kempe for doing the thing but also right. yeah I like I when I looked at the Kings roster at the start of the season I did not have. Adrian no. can be leading this team in goals. No. I assume that Kopitar would be leading the team in goals with like 14. So. <laughs> yeah, Kempe's best season previously 
was basically his rookie year, 2017-18, 16 goals in 81 games, 37 overall points. He's got 47 right now. So, like, I mean, that's great for him. I'm proud of him. Like, go, go Adrian Kempe. But, yeah, this was not – no one thought this was going to happen. We all were just like, yeah, he's going to have another weird season where he scores, like, six goals. Fine. <laughs> It is, it is deeply satisfying, though, that he is doing this, because now I get to basically, like, stick my tongue out at everyone that was like, Adrian Kempe sucks, and I'm like, you suck. <laughs> right, like fire, like, fire him into the sun, trade him for, like, parts. I'm like, okay, or not. Or like, don't do that. Right, um, like, how about, no. Yeah, and then, I mean, we, I, despite the fact that the Kings are what the Kings are, which is a team that doesn't know how to score goals. You know, we have Phil Deneau who has 21 goals, which is a new high for him. Like Trevor Moore has had some of like the weirdest best numbers in like the NHL recently. Um, Trevor Moore, best NHL Trevor. Obviously. Sorry, Trevor Lewis, but you've been replaced by a newer, younger model. This one's from California. I was also expecting him to score. Yeah. I think he almost did a couple of times. So like correct. kudos to him at least for like doing stuff. But for existing in Calgary. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it, it was it was dumb. It, it was a dumb game. And now this game that's coming up later this week against the Oilers is like not for all the marbles, because like there's still several marbles left to collect this season. But, but it's a pretty big marble yeah, it's, that also it's, might be on fire and screaming. Right. And it has like Connor McDavid's face on the side of it. Like mm-hmm. not great. So that's not something that I'm looking forward to. Um, but we can talk about the part of the Kings organization that like already has a guaranteed playoff spot. And that's the Ontario rain. Um, what have they been up to lately? Uh, clinching a playoff spot. Mostly uh, yeah. our horrible, terrible subpar children continue to be firmly above par this season, which you love to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, they have kind of been, I don't know, they've been kind of up and down weirdly. Um, they still haven't managed to recreate that kind of magic that they had at the start of the mm-hmm. season. And I do think it also might be that kind of the King's organizational. Oh God, I'm being perceived. Look away, look away. <laughs> oh God, there's gravy everywhere. I don't know. I, I lost track of this metaphor extremely fast. Um, <laughs> But the point is, the, the the rain have not been as good as they were at the start of the season. They're still good. I think they've kind of relinquished the division title to Stockton. I don't think that's yeah that, uh, likelihood anymore. But I also think that the division winner never gets as far in the playoffs as they probably should. So yeah. maybe this is this is all for the best. Um I actually was just talking to um I was talking about this to Erica Ayala of Locked on Kraken actually we were talking about it's so rare that the best team wins mm-hmm. in hockey because this is a stupid nonsense sport made of voodoo and <laughs> nonsense. Yeah. Um so I think potentially this could work in their favor. I don't mm-hmm. think, you know, they've clinched their playoff spot so they can kind of basically phone it in yeah. for the what they're like 12 15 games left mm-hmm. in the season um they don't get that first round by the that stockton will likely get but i think if they managed if they maybe i don't know that they'll slip down i haven't looked at the the, the standing i don't know that they will drop to third mm-hmm. i think they're pretty solidly in second place but um some favorable playoff matchups potentially if they, yeah um, if they keep slipping and Sarah's apartment is collapsing. <laughs> that was the dog who decided uh, she wants to be a guest star, um, who is currently standing under the table and just did the thing where they shake for no reason. Mm. Um, so that's that's what just happened there. Um, if the AHL playoffs started today, yeah, Stockton would get that first round by. Uh, the rain would play Henderson, which honestly, like of the potential matchups, in the Pacific. I feel pretty good about that. I feel pretty good about that. Um, I don't really want to face the Gulls right off. Colorado mm-hmm. just like the Rangers lost back to back to Colorado. One of them was an eight to one loss, which is terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, and Abbotsford, but, I feel like, has had mm-hmm. the Reigns number basically all season. Yeah. So, so honestly, of those 
teams. Yeah, Henderson. I feel like the the, the Raid has matched up well against Henderson. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it probably helps that Logan Thompson has been uh, called up because yeah. Robin Renner is dead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think he's. I think he's back now, actually. But sort of. Um, yeah. I I would be surprised if Logan Thompson sees Henderson again this yeah. season. Uh, so I think that will work in in the rain's favor. Um, but yeah, I think that for me is the most favorable uh, matchup. Yeah, right now, and yeah. then they can deal with Stockton later, later on. <laughs> yeah, and the rain are getting some reinforcements from younger players who either their seasons have ended uh guys from europe or uh, some college guys that they've signed uh you know they they have had um andre lee has been in the lineup he's just like a big boy uh samuel helenius has also been in and as lee right Mm -hmm. yeah and they're just all they're like big guys so i feel like that's also you know when you talk about like the chemistry of a team or whatever injecting these new players so late in the game i'm sure kind of throw stuff off but you know the rain have also already been dealing with the fact that like all of their defensemen are in los angeles <laughs> so right that's and i think that's also kind of been you know i think it, we laugh about being perceived and stuff but i don't think it necessarily helps right. that obviously sean Dursey has mm-hmm. gone forever yeah. um jacob Moverari, i assume will be back in ontario sooner rather than later um and oh my god, I've gone blank on the third young defender, John um, Spence. Yeah, our favorite, our favorite yeah. son. Yeah. Um, our best boy. Our best, best boy. Uh, I suspect he will be in LA. Yeah, basically until the King season is done. So right. whenever that is, yeah. Um, and if the rain is still playing, then he'll go back down. But and and as it should be, like it's so as someone who covers the AHL, and you understand this as well mm-hmm. as someone who covers the uh, the Chicago Bulls for. Uh, SB Nation, Kane's Country is what it's called. Um, following an A, covering an AHL team kind of sucks because when it gets to the playoffs, like your team is not the most important team in that organization. You know, if both teams have made the playoffs, then all of the Kings' good young players will be going up as black aces and therefore, you know, decimating the rain essentially. Um, and I, I would be surprised if this doesn't happen in Chicago as well. Obviously, Carolina mm-hmm. is basically locked into making the playoffs, so I would be very surprised if they do not basically just mine Chicago yeah. for all she's got, take yeah. all of their good players, and then when she, Carolina leaves the playoffs, then they can have their children Coming back. Up, yeah. So, like, I, it, it's so tough to, to think about what the rain are going to look like at the start of the playoffs because mm-hmm. I think it's going to be kind of bare bones until the Kings finish losing to uh, whoever edmonton yeah. edmonton yeah yeah, yeah. i feel yeah. like the the like only thing working kind of in the rain's favor is that you know they literally are in the same practice facility so it's not like you know a, a team like chicago and carolina where it's like okay these guys have to go halfway across the country mm. if they need to be you know available for for carolina um so you know the rain and the kings at least could kind of come to an agreement of like yeah we're gonna call you guys up as needed but like we're not gonna mess up with your season too bad I, it just depends on like organizationally how much the the kings value winning for the rain which usually the answer is not very much but <laughs> this year might be different because they do have a legit shot at being good um in the playoffs and it would be nice to see them go on another deep run uh they haven't done it since they were manchester yeah and and i think that's probably something we're going to talk about in in next segment but uh yeah at at a certain point do you value your young players succeeding with the rain or do you value them getting some very short playoff experience in the nhl you know like where would you rather have Jordan Spence, for yeah. example, playing bottom four minutes in Los Angeles for the like six games worth of playoff time that they have there? Or would you rather him, you know, getting uh, the AHL doesn't give you ice time statistics, which is nope. extremely annoying, but I would assume they don't. upwards of 22, 24 yeah. minutes a game. You know, would you rather have him playing those kind of meaningful minutes or would you rather have him playing limited minutes in LA? You know, yeah. and I. And again, this is something I, I talked about uh, today, actually, about 
being mad that players don't want to go to the NHL when they are on a good college hockey or a good junior hockey mm-hmm. team. Like, why would, for example, Dylan Strome mm-hmm. want to go to an absolutely awful, terrible, no good, very bad Arizona Coyotes team <laughs> when he could be in Erie and, you know, come a game away from winning the, the Memorial Cup? And I think it's it's kind of a, a similar thing here of do you want your young players to win or do you mm-hmm. want them to get experience? And I think winning is something that is important for them to learn, especially the very, very youngest, you know, the, the babyest kings. Yeah. The yeah. tiniest kings, you could say. The, ti- the tiniest kings for Tiny Kings Tuesday. Uh, I'm not we'll... sure who the tiniest king is. I'm going to look that up while you do yes. the ad read. Yes, we'll uh, we'll talk more about that coming up, and we'll discover who the tiniest king is. It's not Mike Richards because he's gone. Uh, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. But first, this episode, of course, is not complete without telling you all about RockAuto.com because if you are like me and you are a person with a car that has parts that you occasionally need replaced, your least favorite thing to do is to go to the car parts store and be like, "Excuse me, sir, may I have another?" Uh, and then they look at you like you don't know what you're talking about or that you don't know what. A car is or whatever and it's just very annoying and then half the time all they do is they go on their little computer on their little internet and then they order the part that you needed from the internet and it's like i could have not left my house i could have not put on pants why did i do this to myself you can go to rockauto.com and you don't have to leave your house you don't have to put on pants you don't have to talk to another human being you can just order your car parts from them uh prices are reliably low no matter who you are if you're a do-it-yourselfer or a mechanic who just you know is working at home or you're like me and you can replace two things without having to google it uh, you can get the same low prices at rock auto so go check out their easy to use website today it's super quick and easy to find what they have for your car or your truck uh, and you can go and order parts today so go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or your truck right locked on in the how did you hear about us box so that they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliable low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. Who's the smallest king? I got distracted from looking up the tiniest king because I found out that Quentin Byfield is the babyest king. Uh, obviously, he was born in 2002, which does make no. me want to curl up and crumble into dust. No, there was uh, some TikTok. The, I'm going to derail this entire thing right now. There was a TikTok that I saw earlier that it was like, you know, some dude doing a, a youth doing a skit because that's what they do on the TikToks. Um, and it was like he was in a, a, a store buying beer and he's like, oh, do you need like, let me pull up my ID. And the cashier is like, oh, don't worry. I already saw the one on your birth date. And the guy's like, you saw the one. And, you know, and then it's like, dunk, 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 like realize, <laughs> oh, no. If you like, I was born in 1999. Some like time, like people were born in 2002. That's a thing. I thought it just stopped. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I I was talking to a, a, again the completely derailed. We will get back to the tiniest king in just a minute. I was talking to a, a colleague at work today who told me that he was seven in 2013. No, and I just like no felt my soul leave my body that's um, not okay but in terms of in terms of, of the kings i did find out that the kings have one healthy defenseman that was born after 1994 is it olimata no he was born in 1994 it is alex edler oh that's right i forgot he's mostly alive uh yeah. your def- our defenseman we got tobias beyond foot 2001 sean dersey 1998 alex edler 1986 because he's old as the hills uh olimata 1994 jacob moverari 1998 jordan spence 2001 troy stetcher who i always think is older than he is is 1994 so uh they are they are the children a bunch of children uh the tiniest king according to nhl.com's official stats is blake lazart who apparently is five foot nine um, so I assume I, he's actually like five seven and a bit. Yeah, he can't be. I've never seen him like in person, like you know, not at a game. But no, that that boy is not five nine. No, the greatest lie I, the NHL ever told me was that Mike Richards <laughs> is five eleven. So 
Yeah, no, that's there. There was, um, I mean, it, it's one of your prospects, but I was telling you about this, that, uh, there, there's one of the Columbus's prospects. Who's a small boy who plays for the monsters and, uh, the, the broadcast guys for the wolves, the HL team I cover, we're talking about him and they're like, yeah, five, seven, like on skates, maybe <laughs> like just very transparently, like, Oh no, that boy's no. not who, he is, who they are. It is funny. They, I, I'm always curious about like stuff like that of, how how many inches can you add onto a height before it becomes mm-hmm. ridiculous? Like, like suspicious. I feel like if you're over five nine, you can claim five eleven. If you're yeah. any little shorter than that, you can't get anywhere near six foot. No, you know. No, um, but I also think about this one guy that was convinced that Dustin Bufflin's stats were bumped in the other direction <laughs> because he was like six 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 two hundred and fifty pounds or something, and they were like, "No, he's bigger. He's bigger," but they 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 bump them down so as not to terrify everyone. Like that's my favorite NHL conspiracy. I love it. I love it. I don't know why the third segment of this always goes off the rails. I think it's because my attention span is approximately. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I I do have a fun stat on one of our tiniest Kings, TJ Tynan, who according to the AHL site is five, nine. Um, Mm, Nope. Having, having, having met TJ Tynan and talked to him in person, wearing flats while he is not wearing skates he's not five nine no i know I, how tall i am i would say i would say five six yeah. maybe five seven on a good day and if he's yes. wearing tall shoes yes yeah he bless his heart he's not five nine um he is currently tied for the lead league in points um and is his projected points total right now is 99.4. God, so, that's so annoying. I want him to hit 100 so bad. <laughs> um, I want him to do it. Yeah. And this is like by far. So his previous best season was when he was with the Wolves in 2018 19. He had 71 points in 71 games. So point a game player, 85 in 53 games right now. Like he's just. And like his shooting percentage is high, but it's not like right now it's sixteen point nine, which is higher than yeah, his that's career, like a, little, a tick above average. Although but I would like, say probably closer to average in the AHL than the NHL. I feel like yeah. shooting percentages are typically a little higher there. Yeah, um, I don't know. At some point, we're going to have to do a Mini Kings Monday exclusively about why TJ Tynan can't seem to stick in the NHL for longer than a couple of games because it. Yeah. it Rita, I am confused. Yeah, especially, you know? like, because I feel like the excuse has always been, for a lot of these guys in the AHL, has been size. And mm. I get it. But we just talked about Blake Lazat. Like, the NHL is not as obsessed with you must be 6'6 and meaty to make it in the league. Um, so, like, that kind of negates a big reason why a lot of guys get stuck in the AHL. And I feel like for him, yeah, and this is a whole other episode, but like, I feel like now he's just typecast as an AHL guy. Yeah, which which is not necessarily a bad thing. Like, again, it kind of goes back to, do you want to be the star in Mm -hmm. the AHL or do you want to be a depth guy in the NHL? And like the way that these guys are wired, I assume it means that he wants to be a depth player in the NHL because NHL or bust, you know? Yeah. But... I think, yeah, I, I want him to get a real legitimate shot mm-hmm. on an NHL team for longer than, like, three games because yeah. someone is injured. Right. Yeah. But you just, I don't know, I just feel like he needs, give him 10 games, 15 games at one, mm-hmm. in one go, and I think yeah. that's that's what he needs. But, yeah, because, yeah. you know, you look at, I mean, you look at Braden Point. For example, mm-hmm. uh, Johnny Gaudreau, who scored twice mm-hmm. against the Kings to kind of bring it full circle. <laughs> He's on 35 goals this season, you know? Johnny And Johnny Gaudreau, like, I, I could snap him in half. Yeah, he's a small boy. He's, he's tiny very, like, and wiry tiny. and, like, yeah, size is, size is the most frustrating mm-hmm. thing about the NHL. This idea that you need to be big and beefy and yeah. be able to hit people like it's yeah. just that's not the game anymore you know yeah well speaking of big big and beefy um that's the probably the best segue i'll ever do in my life um <laughs> two things playing the penguins soon right <laughs> nope 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 uh 
Curtis McDermott just signed a new contract <laughs> extension with uh, the Colorado Avalanche. Oh, so thank God. Two more years of Curtis McDermott. God, um, that's just so funny. It's hilarious. They're so I, good up front. And then they, they have, have Nathan McDermott. McKinnon and then the back end. They've got Jack Johnson and <laughs> Curtis McDermott like, and Eric Johnson. I don't. Jared Bednar should win the Jack Adams just for making all of them look like competent defensemen. Is he still a winger? I know we were experiment- experimenting with left wing Curtis McDermott for a while, which is my favorite. Yeah, I think I think he goes up and up and down, but you know why not? Let's make it crazy. Um, the other Put big and goal. beefy. <laughs> Do it, Jared. Do it, Jared Bednar. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> the other big and beefy note I have to end on is uh, Anaheim Ducks captain Ryan Getzloff announced today that he is retiring at the end of this season. So pour one out for Ryan Getzloff. We no longer have to watch um, Jonathan Quick try to murder him or vice versa. <laughs> um, and I mean, realistically, though, good on him for like calling it quits on his own terms. Um I feel like that's a thing that you don't see very often yeah. anymore. It's a guy who's like injured for mm-hmm. most of the season and then they go on long term IR yeah. the season after and then they Ryan just kind of lead into the ether. Like yeah. Brandon Dubinsky, for example. Yeah. Um, with Ryan Getzlaff retiring, does that mean that Joe Thornton is the only player in the NHL that doesn't wear a half visor? Uh, Lucic. He might be the last guy. Milan Lucic doesn't wear one. Oh, well, I, for- I forget that he exists. Plays NHL hockey. Yeah, they might be it though. I think because th- I'm pretty. I don't know if Brian Boyle started wearing one or not. I feel like he did because didn't he have eye issues? Probably. But yeah, th- there was not very many. Yeah. Guys left. Yeah, uh, which is good. I am. I'm right. glad that that is that is a dying breed. Right. Please, re- uh, please protect your faces. Please protect um, your faces. Every time yeah. I see someone without a visor, I think about that Mark Stahl eye injury, mm-hmm. and just my entire brain yeah. shrivels up. No, thank you. No, thank you. Um, we'll have several opportunities to say goodbye to Ryan Getzloff because the Ducks are playing the Kings a whole slew of times leading up to the end of the season. I hope that like he and Jonathan Quick get in a fight just for old time's sake. In well, like why not? This game. is going to be your last chance, Jonathan. Right. Do it. Like, do it for just, us. Just do it. Just do it. Um, so, bye, Ryan Getzloff. We'll <laughs> see you later. I, I'm i sure he will not go anywhere because he's just going to hire hockey. him to like be like a Trevor Zegers Wrangler or something. So, we'll see. Uh, that's it for today. I think we've covered a lot of ground. We'll uh, continue to beat the why hasn't TJ Tynan gotten to the NHL drum in future episodes That's of the, the show. Drum I own. <laughs> it's actually it's a very tiny, drums, it's a very tiny drum. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, uh, the drum is very disproportionate to the size of TJ Tynan. <laughs> love it i love it for people who want to hear more from you or read about your rain coverage or anything else like that where can they find you uh yeah so playoffs are ramping up so i'm going to be doing some playoff preview stuff over at uh field pass hockey which is where you can find most of my rain rating uh it's kind of fallen by the wayside over the past couple of months because life continues to find exist <laughs> um but you can follow me over at fph rain go to fieldpasshockey.com for all of my written work I can't in good conscience recommend paying attention to the Blue Jackets, but if you would like to, I'm over at Locked on Blue Jackets. We are LO underscore Blue Jackets on Twitter. And uh, if you would like to follow someone who just randomly yells about hot food takes or uh, how maybe if you see a player lying face down on the ice, you should blow the play dead, looking at no one in particular, especially (laughs) not the referees in uh, last night's Bruins Blue Jackets game. Uh, but if you would like some hot takes, it mixed in with your hockey and also some dog pictures. You can find me at uh, underscore Jacob Foster, J A K O B F O R S T E R. Next Mini Kings Monday, I will have my Twitter handle underneath my actual name so you can spell it yourself. <laughs> Love it. I, of course, am on Twitter at right said Sarah. Uh, the show's on Twitter at Locked on LA Kings. So come follow along, tweet at me your weird hot takes or whatever, uh, and we'll entertain them on the show. Thank you so much for listening today. Make sure you have subscribed to the show. You can subscribe on YouTube, hit the notification button so you never miss an episode. And, you know, like say nice things in the comments because that's 
that makes my day. So thank you so much for listening. Come back tomorrow for more Kings news here on Lockdown Los Angeles Kings, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.